10 high paying social science degrees. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we jump into it, make sure to gently tap the like button in order to defeat the evil YouTube algorithm. On this channel, we talk about personal finance, college degrees, careers and opportunities that are gonna lead you to success. And we also go over how you can avoid some of the common financial traps that almost everybody falls for. If you're new here and that sounds like something that interests you and you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you never miss an upload. Now, now with that out of the way, let's jump right into it. We are going to be talking about the 10 highest paying social science degrees. Now we already talked about the best and the worst social science degrees and in those videos we went over all kinds of different factors. We talked about demand, flexibility, job satisfaction, X factors, all kinds of different things and we also talked about salary. But I got a bunch of requests and in this video I am going to be talking about specifically just the degrees that make the most money. So we're specifically going to be talking about salary salary. So the first one on the list is going to be an urban and regional planning degree. So this one is going to be all about designing cities kind of like you do in Sims so that you don't end up with crazy congestion like you would have in LA. With this degree you would expect to make around $47,000 a year in your first five years after graduating and then the mid-career pay which is 10 years after graduating and onward is going to be about $87,000 a year. Now you could become an urban and regional planner of course and they would make around $74,000 a year. There's 39,000 jobs available and it's growing at 11% which is much faster than average that's fantastic and that means that over the next decade you'd have around 4,400 new jobs popping up however as you could probably see most of the people who go into this job have a master's degree and that's a common thing that you're going to see with a lot of these social science related degrees is that unfortunately you have to get a master's degree in order to get those really coveted careers another thing about this one is you'll likely have to move somewhere in order to get your very first job once you get a few years of experience, you get your foot in the door, you probably can go just about anywhere that you want. Next one on the list is going to be organizational psychology. So this is going to be psychology that is applied to an organization or a business in such a way where it can make the business better. With this degree, you can expect to make around $48,000 a year starting off and $87,000 a year in mid-career pay. There's a ton of different career paths that you could go down, but one thing you could become is a human resource manager. They make around $116,000 a year. There's $165,000 jobs available and it's growing at 6% which is faster than average meaning over the next decade there's going to be about 10,000 new jobs that pop up. With this one you'll likely have to move to a big city so a very populated area that has a lot of these bigger companies that like to hire organizational psychologists. Next one on the list is probably a surprising one and that's going to be a philosophy degree. Now philosophy is basically the study of existence and knowledge. With this one you can expect to make around 48,000 a year and mid-career pay is going to be 89,000. Now let's say you were able to land a job as a philosophy professor, either at a community college or something along those lines, you'd probably make around $88,000 a year and there'd be around 23,000 jobs available. Now, to be honest with you, I think these numbers might be a little bit skewed just because of the fact that really smart people tend to study degrees like philosophy. So you could argue that these would be the same people who would have done really well financially, whether they got a degree or they didn't get a degree or whether they got a different degree rather than philosophy. There's a big question question here whether it's correlation or causation. Realistically speaking, it's probably a little bit of both. I think if it's true that smart people tend to study philosophy, you could also argue that companies, aka hiring managers and business owners, would look at people who have philosophy degrees and think they might be a really good hire. But completing a philosophy degree is going to show that you've really honed your reasoning as well as communication skills. A lot of philosophy graduates will end up going back to graduate school. Many will go to law school, for instance. And so that that probably skews the results as well. The next one on the list is going to be industrial psychology and this one is very similar to organizational psychology. So there's a lot of overlap there but basically industrial focuses more on a micro level whereas organizational is more of a macro level when it comes to psychology within an organization. So organizational psychology might focus on building a really good organizational culture whereas industrial psychology would focus on maybe recruiting the right people into the organization so that you can build a really good organizational culture. Now with this one you can expect to make around $47,000 a year starting out and mid-career pay is going to be at a pretty impressive $90,000. Now it's honestly pretty rare to get employed as a peer industrial or organizational psychologist but it does exist and there's around 630 people employed and they make around $111,000 a year. Usually they're going to go into other related careers in business like maybe human resource manager. It's also a relatively rare degree and so the sample size 
size for the surveys and feedback data that a lot of these sites provide is probably a little bit off. Next one on the list is going to be political science. This is the branch of knowledge that deals with government as well as political activity and behavior. With a poli-sci degree, you can expect to earn $47,000 a year starting off and $89,000 in mid-career pay. If you were to become a political scientist, you could expect to earn around $122,000 a year. There's 7,000 jobs available. It's growing at 6%, which is faster than average, meaning there's going to be about 400 more jobs that pop up in the next 10 years. But unfortunately, it also requires a master's degree usually. Now with this degree, you could work for state and local government, nonprofits, federal government. You could work directly for politicians for their campaigns. It's probably a good idea as a political scientist to get very well versed in statistics, a little bit of math, and it might even be a good idea for you to learn some computer programming. Next one on the list is going to be an organizational behavior degree. Now this is another one that's going to be similar to IO psychology, and you're going to be competing for a lot of the same jobs. This one is a little more more focused on the behavior of the people within an organization itself. Now with this degree, you can expect to make around $54,000 a year starting out and $92,000 in mid-career pay. This is a very rare degree though, so it's probably a little bit off. It could be more than that and it also could be less than that. One career path you could go down is becoming a training and development manager. They make around $113,000 a year. There's 42,000 jobs available. It's growing at 7%, which is faster than average. And over the next 10 years, they're expected to add about 3,100 new jobs. Next one on the list is going to be an international relations degree. And this is gonna be the study of politics, economics, and law on a global level. With this degree, you can expect to make around $49,000 a year starting out and 96,000 in mid-career pay. Now, one career path you could go down is becoming a public relations specialist. They make around $61,000 a year. There's 274,000 jobs available. Available. It's growing at 7%, which is faster than average, meaning over the next 10 years, there's about 20,000 jobs that will be added. Now, this one can be a really good one if you plan it out really well. If you're going to get an international relations degree, you need to have a plan. What country are you going to study? You know, if you want to have an international relations degree where you're basically like an expert on Russia or something like that, you probably want to learn the language a little bit, learn the culture. You'll be much more valuable to people who might want to hire you. If you just get the degree and expect to get a job, you're probably not going to have a good time. But if you plan it out really well, you get the degree, maybe even double major in a different one, this one can really work out for you. Also, you'll likely end up traveling quite a bit. So if you don't like traveling, this would not be a good one for you to go into. But if you do like traveling, this might be a great choice. Next one on the list is going to be very similar to political science, and that's going to be a government degree. Now, government focuses more on the actual structure of how the government works all the way from a federal level at the very top, you know, you got like the president down to the state level and even the county and local level. With a government degree, you can expect to make around $52,000 a year starting out and mid-career pay is an impressive $103,000 a year. Now, of course, you could become a political scientist with this degree. I will say that this is another very rare degree and so the statistics, the numbers that I'm giving you are probably a little bit off, but if you have a really good plan, this can be a good one for you to go for. Next one on the list is going to be another extremely rare degree, which is a rhetoric degree. So rhetoric is all about studying and implementing the art of persuasion, and it's usually done via text. With this degree, you can expect to make around $49,000 a year starting out and 104,000 in mid-career pay. Now there are actually quite a few different things that you can go into. Sometimes they end up becoming copywriters, for instance. You could become kind of a semi-copywriter that works in the technology industry, and so you'd be more of a technical copywriter where you explain kind of advanced concepts in such a way where you persuade people to buy your software. Technical writers make around $72,000 a year. There's 58,000 jobs available and it's growing at 7%, which is faster than average, meaning over the next 10 years, they're gonna be adding 4,300 jobs. Now with this degree, you could go into PR, you could go into marketing, all kinds of different things like that. It is a little bit too specific for my taste though. I prefer degrees that are a little more broad and flexible. So for instance, if you wanna go into marketing, maybe you should just get a marketing degree. In fact, you'd be better off getting getting an MBA, general business degree, or even a communications degree than getting a rhetoric degree. Next one on the list is going to be economics. And economics is the study of how wealth flows through a country. With this degree, you can expect to make around $58,000 a year starting out and 109,000 in mid-career pay. I would say this is definitely the best social science degree by a mile. If you wanted to become an economist, for instance, you would make around $105,000 a year. There's 
20,000 jobs available and it's growing at 14%, which is much faster than average, meaning there's about 2,900 jobs that will be added over the next 10 years. However, you do have to get a master's degree, generally speaking. There are a lot of other career paths that you can go down with this. A lot of people end up working in the finance industry, for instance. There's a lot of business related careers that you're going to be competing with business majors for. With this one, I'd say the most important thing is that you make sure you get a really good, solid understanding of mathematics, statistics, and maybe even add in a little bit of programming. This can also be a really good one for you to double major in. By the way, guys, check out my degree ranker below in the Patreon link. I've been working super hard on it, and I think it's the best degree ranking that you'll ever see. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead, gently tap the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And before you leave, go ahead and check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.